Welcome. I want quickly to say something about the Lamplighter Group. So the Lamplighter Group is a fantastic group. It is a finitely generated but not finitely presented. So there are relations. Is I am at the position here. That's my position of the Lamplighter. That's an integer. And what I can do is with when I use L, I can light the lamp. I can light or extinguish the lamp. So when I uh, apply L here, I would actually extinguish the light. And then I can also move. I can move over to the, to the, to the right or to the left. So that increases N, that decreases N. And uh, this rule here, which we have here, tells us that if you do things twice, if you light and unlight a light twice, you get, uh, again, the same state. And uh, this means that if you light, move to the right by N, then light again, <coughs> then move to the left by N, and then light again, and then move to the right by N, light again and move to the left uh, by N, and then, then you should get the identity. I'm the lamp, lamp lighter here. So what I do is maybe I, I'm at this position here. So what I can do is I can, uh, extinguish a light, I can move over and uh, extinguish the light and then I can move over and light the light, I can move over and light the light and can move over again. <laughs> then I have not changed anything in this. I'm excited about it because it's also a prototype where you see the semi-direct product here. So this is a these are all the finite beam configurations you have on the integers. And this is the base, which is Z. So I said that it's a non-abelian. It's also a non-natural group. And the reason is because the integers are not natural. So there are all other group structures which you can so on that set of, of a metric space. And so the, the metric space alone does not determine the group. But you can make it, you can actually make it, extend it in the same way that the integers have been extended to the dihedral, infinite dihedral group. You can also just uh, now use, instead of a translation, you can use AB. So A square is the identity, B square is the identity, AB is the translations. Make it a cox of the group. That's uh, usually happening if you kind of go into this dihedral uh, world, then you get something something natural. There's a nice uh, uh, representation of this group in matrices. So you have the shear, and you have also the kind of the identity with the T. So this is a matrix. Uh, when you uh, invert it, you get the T minus one. So when you when you when you look at the group generated by these matrices, the multiplicative group generated by these matrices, then you have a uh, uh, in general, what you get is the general element is here just a polynomial in t, t minus 1, and then you have n and 0, 1. Polynomial in z2, t, t to the minus 1. And that's the. This also can be generalized. Of course, you can take instead of the you know, instead of the integers, you can take, for example, a circular group. We have a finite group, a cyclic group, and over every point we have a light on or off, turn on here, and so on. I can do arbitrary things. I can move around and I can turn on and off lights. And it's clear we can do that over arbitrary graphs. We can do that over arbitrary also state uh, groups. In this case, it's C2. And I like this also because it's really what happens in the in the Rubik cube. So what you have in the Rubik cube, you have not the light on and off, but you have three positions, the the three rotation positions which are possible for every of these cubes. And what happens is the base group is S8, all the permutations. I write it down here. This is the case of the enlarged Rubik cube where you also can, for example, this meson state is a one quark and an anti quark. 
and uh, so this is one has turned and one has turned uh, clockwise and one has turned counterclockwise and what it produces is a meso so a quark anti quark state and uh, so but if you are allowed also to turn this freely then you have this uh, you have this group otherwise you have to divide out c uh, z3 because the last is determined but this is also a rest product but it's over the base group which is the permutation group with eight elements but you can do that over any group and you can do that also over, you can take also as this num the states you can take any any group so it's a it's a very kind of prototypical situation is lamp lighter group and it produces um, a very interesting classes of groups so this group was natural because both here were natural because it's a semi-direct product of natural groups while here we have z we have taken z which was not natural that's kind of my take on this but uh, it's also interesting here in this context that the semi-direct products appear and group theory appears in topology and i think that was one of the main motivation for the founders of this uh, theory like max Dane and others who have started with uh, looking at fundamental groups and you can look at the fundamental group, say, of the circle. When you look at the circle, the fundamental group is Z. So it tells you how many times you wind around. You have a, a sphere, which is dimension two or higher, is, is simply collected. So it's a real fundamental group. So this is the fundamental group here, pi one. <coughs> M. This is M. This is space. And this is the, the fundamental group. The torus, of course, has you know, just that direct product of... So what happens is, for example, here, this is the torus, you take A, B, that's the same thing than B, A. So they commute. So we have the free product, free commutative product, the free product, but with commutative product. So it's the direct product of the, of the integers. Very interesting is the projective A, B. This is actually bringing you back in. This point is the same point in here. When you apply A, B, you are back. At the, at the same point. So AB and AB square is the, is, the, is the identity. We have just Z2. What I write here, this is Z over 2Z. It's kind of usually, usually used. The Klein bottle is very interesting because also here a semi-direct product appears. It's the, the base is the integers and the fibers is also the integers. And you can understand this kind of, this is the presentation uh, of this group, you can understand it by just writing it down. So this is one generator, this is the other generator. When you do A, B, A, this is the same thing than B. Very interesting case already where you have a, a non-abelian, <coughs> where you have a non-abelian, uh, a non-abelian fundamental group. Also non-abelian, of course, is if you take the free product, if you take the, the wedge sum of two circles, for example, you glue two circles, you get this figure eight, and then you can go around A and you can go around B. There's no relation between A and, A and B. So this is the free group. I, I saw when looking at the lamplighter group, uh, where this has been used in topology, I saw a paper of uh, Grigor Chuk. So, so these are group theorists and Linnell Schick, these are more topologists. And they were looking at uh, extension of the, of the light, lamplighter group, which appears as a fundamental group of a manifold M, <clears throat> a seven mani manifold where the where the, the Betty numbers, these L2 Betty numbers, are uh, yeah, not what you would expect. It's one third, while this group is a, is a two group. Every finite subgroup has a power, this order power of, of two. There's a conjecture here of Atiyah from the 70s which says that if the G has bounded torsion, then these uh, Betty numbers would be rational, rational numbers. So this is still open. <coughs> and there is even a stronger version, which says also in the case of bounded uh, torsion, that actually can describe what these rational numbers are. They are in a module generated by rational numbers, which are given by the, by the reciprocals of the torsion. The paper here was kind of a counterexample to that strong conjecture in the case when torsion is unbounded. And in the meantime, one has also done it for this. So there are uh, cases where the Betty numbers are irrational 
when you have unbounded unbounded torsion. <clears throat> so that's kind of a relation between a kind of fancy topology and uh, fancy group theory. And uh, just about this definition of the uh, L2 Betty numbers, I'm actually interested in this also, started to get interested in this in the case of graphs, infinite graphs. So Atiyah looked at that and has that this kernel here has nice property that you can take the trace and integrate over the manifold and get a number which he called the Betty number. Later it has been shown that this is independent. This was done in the Riemannian manifold setting. It was shown this depends on the Riemannian manifold. And interestingly one has also this euler poincare formula here for now these rational numbers but for the for the euler characteristic of the manifold M not of the universal the universal color here. It stopped this they just I wanted to say something about the uh, lamp lighter there's also here when I told somebody in the department about it uh, pointed out there is a lamp lighter uh, brewery and I got some beer so this is lamp lighter brewing company in Cambridge which has the lamp lager so, okay that's it for today mm -hmm.